We would like to welcome you this morning on behalf of the eldership to the 53rd Avenue Church of Christ. We are glad you're here, mask and all. I'm glad everybody is practicing what they need to practice and stay and say. That's the name of the game. We're thrilled to be able to worship this morning uh, in person, but we know we have those who are worshiping also virtually with us. It's not a direct broadcast, but they will see it later, and it's exactly what you are being able to see now. So we're thankful that, that we are able to do that, but we're glad you're here this morning. I have a couple of notes I want to read. Uh, first, dear church family, thank you for all the cards, wishes, kind thoughts, offers of food, mostly for the prayers. My knee surgery went well, and I am on the mend. And Christian loves Judy Aldridge, and Judy is sitting right back on my right, your left, and she is here this morning. So Judy, raise your hand, because people might not know who you are under your mask. We're glad she's back. Kyle and Sheena C. Sink are having a baby. Right, y'all all know that. But I bet you don't know what they're having. Oh, you do know what they're having. Well, for those who don't, Gordon and Penny want you to know, because they're thrilled, that they are having a... Boy, there you are. So it's It's blue. As we worship this morning, we want to worship the Lord in spirit and in truth. I know we're all here to do that. And we pray that as we, we worship this morning that we'll be able to do that. When we get to the Lord's Supper part of our service at the end, we're using these little cups right here for those who hadn't used the cups. Has everybody got a little cup, communion for, for the Lord's Supper? Everybody's got one. If you don't raise your hand, we will get you one. So just raise your hand up high. And the ushers are going to bring you one. So keep them up, keep them up, because they'll grab them and bring them right down to you. Now, for those who hadn't used these, you peel off the little top layer for the, for the bread, and then there's a bottom layer you peel off for the fruit of the vine. So you peel off the top layer, we'll all take the bread together, and then there'll be a, another prayer, and then you peel off the, the other little uh, layer, which is made out of a little foil, I think, and then that's the fruit of the vine. Communion will be taken, just keep your hand up if you haven't got this. Communion will be, uh, I'm, I'm sorry, uh, the collection will be done, if you hadn't done it virtually, it will be at the end uh, with baskets outside the doors. And remember, try not to congregate in the foyer. Go ahead and go on out. We're trying to be safe and keep our six feet distances observed. Let's remember that we are ordinary people worshiping an extraordinary God. Good morning. It's good to see all of you this morning. Let's sing together. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad, he has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. I will enter his gates with thanksgiving in my heart. I will enter his courts with praise. I will say this is the day that the Lord has made. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. He has made me glad. He has made me glad. I will rejoice for he has made me glad. Brother James Thomas will lead us in prayer. Steps are getting a little shorter. Let us together bow for the word of prayer. Eternal God, most high, 
our Heavenly Father. We humbly bow our heads as well as our hearts before you this morning. We thank you, first of all, Lord, for being the God that you are, doing what you do like no other gods. We thank you for the understanding of your purpose in our lives. We also pray this morning that you may hear our cry because we know that if we live in accordance to your holy and divine will, salvation is ours. Thank you this morning, Lord, because you and only you are the ones that call the shots for everything that will go on down here on earth. And yet, you saw fit to allow us to be here just for a season. Thank you, knowing, Lord, that when this life has ended, if we have been faithful, our reward is eternal. Thank you this morning, Lord Jesus. For there are many that are affected by the virus, the sickness, the plague that is in the world today. Not all will escape, and many has already been found wanting, but Lord, we just thank you that you woke us up this morning after allowing us to lay down last night. We know that it was nothing that we did that caused it, but it's your love and your grace and your mercy that allow us to stand here before you this day, Father. Have mercy on those that are going through bereavement, the loss of a friend or a loved one. But we thank you knowing that there is also a living God who is able to do all things exceedingly and above that which we can even try to comprehend. Thank you this morning, Lord, for blessing those that did come out for worship seeing that we do things differently now because of the troubles that are around us, but it makes us ever conscious of the fact that there's trouble on every side, but that you are God that has the power in your hand to deliver us out of all temptations as well as the evil that surrounds us. There have been many, Lord, that have fallen on their knees because of this epidemic. We thank you that you know what the overall end is going to be. And I know that if we pray and if we agree as to touching any one thing, Lord, it can be done. And so we, this morning, we bow our heads and say, Father, have mercy on us and continue to give us the strength to get up each day knowing that before it's end, Lord, some of us may not even be here. We pray for those hearts that will be wrecked and shaken by the loss of someone that they love, Lord, and we pray that you might give them the strength to endure these times and trials and temptations. Father, thank you this morning. We just thank you for so much because you've been so very good to, in spite of the difficulties and the troubles that are around us, Father, in spite of what men might do and say about us, we thank you that you are God that sits high. You look low. You know all and everything about each and every one of us. Let our hearts be pure before you. 
forgive us of our temptation. Forgive us when we fall short, when we don't treat each other right. Father, teach us the real meaning of how to love each other. And help us to love one another, hoping and believing that we're praying for the right things, the things that are really necessary and that are needed in the lives of the others. Not all about myself, Lord, because in my sickness, I still pray for others. I thank you for the prayer of the righteous, and I pray that you continue to pray for me and mine because we don't want any to be lost. I thank you for the praise report that have come back saying that some went into the hospital and they were able to make it back out again. Because during the time that we're living now, many check in and they don't check out. But you are faithful and you deserve the glory. Bless us this day. And accept our thanks, Father, for again another opportunity to come before you and worship you and praise your name. Now we pray bless those that will come on after me and to sing songs, hymns and spiritual songs, those that will break unto us the bread of life, those that will say unto us the words that he have coming from his heart that it might help us in some way. Father, continue to be with us throughout the remainder of this service. And it's in the name, the mighty name of Jesus the Christ that we ask it all. Let the church say amen. Come now, fount of every blessing, to my heart to sing thy grace. Streams of mercy never ceasing Call for songs of loudest praise Teach me some melodious sonnet Sung by flaming tongues above Praise the mount I'm fixed upon it Mount of thy redeeming love Oh, to grace, how great a debtor, daily I'm constrained to be. Let thy goodness, like a feather, bind my wandering heart to thee. Prone to wander, Lord, I feel it, prone to leave the God I love. Here's my heart, oh, take and seal it, seal it for thy courts above. Brother Jim Schilling has our scripture reading. Beginning at verse 11. The angel of the Lord came and sat down under the oak in Oprah that belonged to Joash, the Abiezrite, where his son Gideon was threshing wheat in a winepress to keep it from the Midianites. When the angel of the Lord appeared to Gideon, he said, The Lord is with you, mighty warrior. Pardon me, my Lord, Gideon replied, but if the Lord is with us, why has all this happened to us? Where are all his wonders that our ancestors told us about when they said, Did not the Lord bring us up out of Egypt? But now the Lord has abandoned us and given us into the land of the Midian. The Lord turned to him and said, Go in the strength you have and save Israel out of Midian's hand. Am I not sending you? Pardon me, my lord, Gideon replied, but how can I save Israel? My clan is the weakest in Manasseh, and I am the least in my family. The Lord answered, I will be with you, and you will strike down all the Midianites, leaving none alive. Thank you, Jim. Good morning, church. 
It is good to see each and every one of you. I hope you're having a great day. I hope you have a great week. I hope the past week was good. I know we're living in difficult times right now, dealing with uh, the virus. I know many of our number are unable to be with us. I know a lot of them are, are watching uh, this today. And to all of you that are at home, uh, we want you to know that you're missed, but we understand and we encourage you. And if there's anything we can do for you, we stand ready. And for those of you that are present this morning, it's a great encouragement to me, and I know it's an encouragement to one another. I know that's why we, we, one of the reasons we assemble is so that we can encourage one another. So as I look out at your beautiful masked face, uh, I, I welcome you and, and thank you for being here. Mac, I'm trying to turn my screen on. This one. It appeared. It's like me. It's a little slower than it used to be. All right. But uh, this morning, as we look at things, we're looking at the Lord is with you. And as the Scripture reading read, uh, we're going to be looking at part of the story of Gideon. We don't have time for all of it, but uh, I, I encourage you to go back and read uh, the entire context. But to get an idea, get to understand the context for where I'm going to be starting from today, let's remember what's taken place in history prior to, to this text with, with Gideon. Moses has led the children of Israel out of Egypt. They've spent... 40 years wandering in the wilderness. Uh, then they finally get to go in and conquer the land. And Joshua leads them. And as they do this, they conquer the entire land for Israel, the promised land, that land that they had been seeking for Oh, so very long. And then at the end, we, re we recall the, the verse about Joshua before he dies. As for me and my house, we will serve the Lord. You know, and then we go into the book of Judges. And Joshua dies and other people come out to lead God's people. Well, God's people have a problem. They continually serve God for a while and then they go off and do things their own way. And they're punished for it. And they're taken into captivity. And to give you an idea, I want to run through these right quick. Starting in Judges chapter 2. In Judges 2, in verse 11, it says, And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And they were taken in punishment. Then they repent, they get right, they live righteous for a while, and then again, in Judges 3 and verse 7, And the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And they're punished, and they suffer, and they struggle again. And then they repent and they get right with God. Then again, in Judges 3 and verse 12, and the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. We see it happening over and over and over again. Then Judges 4 and verse 1, and the people of Israel again did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And they suffer and they struggle until they repent. Then we pick up in Judges 6 and verse 1, and the people of Israel did what was evil in the sight of the Lord. And the Lord gave them over to the Midianites. So we see this repetition happening over and over and over and over again. Do you think the same thing could be happening to us today? If we do what is righteous, if we do what God calls us to do, he says we'll be blessed. When we don't, 
terrible things happen. So, as we get to this point in the book of Judges, in Judges chapter 6, we're introduced to a gentleman named Gideon. Now, Gideon is one of my Bible heroes. Gideon is what he tells us later is one of the least of all of his brothers and all of his family and all of Israel. But God uses us. So we're going to look at three things about Gideon this morning. First of all, we see the presence of Gideon. In verse 11 of chapter 6, we see his activity. In verse 11 it says, Now the angel of the Lord came and sat under the oak at Ophrah, which belonged to Joash the, Aber, the Aberizrite, while his son Gideon was beating out wheat in the winepress to hide it from the Midianites. They were having to beat out wheat in hiding rather than out on the threshing floor as they normally would. Because they had to work in secret because of fear of the Midianites. Sadly, that's how we work sometimes. We work in hiding sometimes right here in the church building rather than out in the community, out in the world where people can see us and hear from us. And we see it says, And Gideon said to them, I'm sorry, we're talking about his attitude now, and it says, And Gideon said to him, Please, my Lord, if the Lord is with us, why then has all this happened to us? And where are all the wonderful deeds that our fathers recounted to us, saying, Did not the Lord bring us up from Egypt? But now the Lord has forsaken us and given us into the hand of the Midians. Now, Gideon is very familiar with the things that have been taking place. Those things that I read just at the beginning, how they became evil and repented and all, they just went through a period of 40 years of good. The world was great because they were obeying God. But then, now as he's speaking to Gideon, if we go back and read the context, we find out that they've been under the Midianites for seven years. They've been struggling. They've been having to hide and do the work of the Lord or, or try to just survive. They've forgotten God. They've left God behind. They're, they're worshiping false gods. They're not doing what God wants them to do. And then we see Gideon's assumption. It says in verse 15, And he said to him, Please, Lord, how can I save Israel? He's assuming that he can't do it. Behold, my clan is the weakest in Manasseh. And it was. And I am the least in my father's house. And he was. But God can take the very weakest, the very smallest, the very slightest, and make them where they can do great things. And we need to realize that even today, upon hearing the call that God gives Gideon, Gideon starts assuming things. God, Gideon had already decided that he was just going to live the way he was. He wasn't calling on God. He wasn't doing what God wanted him to do. He was up in hiding, trying to survive, trying to do a little bit. Sometimes we get to be the same way. We assume that God can't use us in great ways. We assume that God doesn't allow us to be the people that He wants us to be. We just accept things the way they are. We, we just do what we can to get by and we leave the rest for someone else. God takes the slightest, the smallest, the weakest and does great things to Him. I think of Jesus whenever He called on His apostles. Where did He find His apostles? Did He stay, stand outside the, the halls of learning? to find the most educated, to find the valedictorians and the salutatorians and the honor students of all the schools? No. He walked by the seashore. He found fishermen. 
He found common people. He found people that had no education, that had no strength, that had no background. And he made great men out of them. He can do the same with us. God saw the potential of Gideon. My clicker's not working. There it is. Whoop. Decided to work all at once. I'll get you there. I can't get it to move. We see that Gideon had potential. He was a man of undiscovered courage. And that goes in your next blank if you're filling them in. Undiscovered courage. In verse 12, he says, And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said to him, The Lord is with you, O mighty man of valor. Gideon could see himself as one that was filled with fear. He saw himself as a slight one. God saw him as a mighty man of valor. How does God view you? How do you view yourself? Many times we view ourselves just like Gideon did. I'm not the one. I'm not able. I'm not the one that can do these things. But yet, God sees us as mighty men of valor, of those that can do great things. Then, we see that Gideon's potential was a man of undeniable ability. In verse 14, while well, we have it here, And the Lord turned to him and said, Go in this might of yours and save Israel from the hand of Midian. Do not I send you. We need to realize who we serve, who we are here. Who did we come to worship this morning? God, Father Almighty, the one that can do anything. He can cure this virus just like that. He can use each and every one of us, no matter what our ability, no matter what our potential might be. And we need to realize that. And He wants to use us. He wants us to rise up. Gideon was reluctant, but yet he listened to God and followed Him. We need to realize Romans 8.31. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? If you're sitting there with God, who can be against us? Do we realize that? Not only on Sundays when we're sitting in worship service, but do we realize it on Mondays and Tuesdays and Wednesdays and throughout the week? Do we realize it when things are tough, when things are difficult, when we struggle? Do we realize it when people are not treating us right? Do we realize it whenever we feel weak and unable to do so many things? Do we remember that God is with us and we can do all these things? He was a man of unlimited resources. In verse 16, he says, And the Lord said to him, but I will be with you and ye shall strike the Midianites as one man. Gideon, the least of the family, the weakest of all. God says, Gideon, I'm going to use you. You're going to do this for me. You're going to do this for your family. You're going to do this for your people. And so we see these unlimited resources. Ephesians 3.20 Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or 
think according to the power at work within us. I always love this verse. Can you imagine that you have a power that's within you that is greater than what you can ask for or greater than you can even think of? That's what God has promised us. That's what God is offering us. Do we believe His Word? What, look, what does He say? He says, I've got this. And I've got it with you. You can do it. Listen to what God says to Israel, to, to Isaiah. Verse 10, chapter 41. Fear not, for I am with you. Be not dismayed, for I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. So as we look out and as we struggle and as we deal with our everyday lives and the things that are come before us and the struggles that we face, God says, I am your God. I will strengthen you. I will help you. How many times do we call on God? How many times this past week have you called on God to help you, to strengthen you, to be with you? He says He's there. He says, I will uphold you with my righteous right hand. And then third of all, we see the performance of Gideon. Now, you're going to have to go back and read the story because I don't have time for all of it about how he selected his men and how these things took place. But Gideon, still struggling, still struggling as oftentimes we do, even when we're serving, we still struggle. In chapter in verse 25 and following it says how he regarded the Lord. That night the Lord said to him, take your father's bull and the second bull seven years old and pull down the altar of Baal that your father has and cut down the asherah that is beside it and build an altar to the Lord your God on the top of the stronghold here with stones laid in due order. Then take the second bull and offer it as a burnt offering with the wood of the asherah that you shall cut down. So Gideon took ten men of his servants and did as the Lord had told him. But because he was too afraid of his family and the men of the town to do it by day, he did it by night. See, Gideon was still dealing with some fear. His entire family had left God. His entire family was worshiping Baal. And he tears down the altars. He does what God tells him to do. He does it fearfully, but he does it. Sometimes serving the Lord can be a little scary. Sometimes it can be a little difficult wondering what are other people going to think, especially whenever it's your own family. Gideon was surrounded with people that had rejected God, even his father, even his own family. God has given us everything we need. We've given God the back seat way too long. We no longer stand in awe of God as we should. We no longer stand in awe of God, the one who's able to deliver us. In 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, it says, If my people who are called by my name humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and heal their land. Did you get that? He tells us that we've got to humble ourselves. We need to pray. We need to repent. If we're not being what God wants us to be, 
That's what we need to be. Gideon learned a valuable lesson in serving God. He learned he had to rely on faith. We too have to learn that same lesson. In chapter 7 and verse 7 it says, And the Lord said to Gideon, With the 300 men who lapped, I will save you and give the Midianites into your hand and let all the others go, every man to his home. Now, if you go back and read the context of what's happened here, Gideon accepts the challenge that God puts before him to go and save his people from the Midianites. And so Gideon puts together an army. And you go back and read this, you find that that army is 32,000 men. And as you read further, he's going up against an army of 120,000 men. But to tell the story in short, God says, Gideon, you got too many men. So he chisels it down. Then God says, Gideon, you still got too many men. And he chisels it down some more. He gets it down to where Gideon has 300 men. God says, I like these odds. 300 against 120,000. I'll show you what we're made of. And Gideon wins the battle. Go back and read it in your daily Bible reading this week. Gideon rose up reluctantly, but he becomes what God wants him to be. Now, we may go kicking and screaming. We may be reluctant as well. But we need to realize that God, through us, can do most anything. Adrian Rogers said, Faith is not believing that God can do something. Faith is knowing that He will. That's what faith is. Brothers and sisters, we need some modern day Gideons. We need some people that will rise up and say, I don't care how slight I might be. I don't care what my family might think. I don't care what the world says should or shouldn't happen. I'm going to put my faith in God, rise up, live for Him, serve Him, be Be there for those people round about me. May they see Christ in my life. May I be able to speak boldly and share Christ with those round about me. May I rise up and be the person God wants me to be and not just hide somewhere and try to get by. Rise up, O men of God. Do you trust the Lord? Do you accept what the world has to offer or do you accept what God has to offer? The work of the Lord can continue, but only one way, through us. If we don't do it, who will? So rise up, O men of God. If you're here, and you're not a child of God, today's the day. Today, if you've been like Gideon, and you've been hiding, and just doing what you have to do to get by, today's the day to repent of that. Today's the day that we rise up and be what God wants us to be. Realizing that God will walk with us, will go with us, will be there with us no matter what the odds no matter how great they might be. You can pick up your Bible and you can read it from cover to cover and you'll read story after story after story of people that were slight, that were less than great. And God turns and makes them great servants of His. We need those people today just as they did then. If we're going to be what God wants us to be, 
We've got to give it all to Him. If you're here and you're subject to His invitation, we invite you to come. My precious Lord, sweeter than all, sweeter than all, Jesus is now and ever will be, sweeter than all the world to me, since I heard his loving call, sweeter than all, sweeter than all, I can follow all the way, hearing him call, hearing him call, Finding him from day to day, sweeter than all, sweeter than all. Jesus is now and ever will be, sweeter than all the world to me. Since I heard his loving call, sweeter than all, sweeter than all. Please be seated. <clears throat> Thank you, Lon. This next song will prepare our minds for communion service to follow. <clears throat> How deep the Father's love for us. How vast beyond all measure that he should give. his treasure. How great the pain of searing loss. The Father turns his face away as wounds which mar the chosen sons to glory. Behold the man upon a cross, my sin upon his shoulders. Ashamed I hear my mind Among the scoffers, it was my sin that held him there until it was accomplished. His dying breath has brought me life. I know that it is finished. I will not boast in anything. No gifts, no power, no and resurrection. Why should I gain from his reward? I cannot give an answer, but this I know paid my ransom, but this 
I know with all my heart. His wounds have paid my ransom. Thank you, Randy. That song is one of my favorite songs, Prepare Me for the Lord's Supper. This is a memorial of God's love for us from before time began. He prepared knowing that we would be frail creatures who would sin. The love he showed through sacrificing his son is beyond comprehension for me. And the suffering that Jesus did for us is also an act of ultimate love. So let's remember the sacrifice that was made for us and the love that was shown through that. Let's pray. Our loving Father, we do thank you for a love that's beyond our understanding. We thank you for preparing a way that we can be forgiven of our sin, that we can stand in your presence at the end of this time. And now we remember the body of Christ as it was tortured and hung on a cross for us. Pray that you will bless this bread as we partake of it. In Christ's name, amen. Let's pray for the cup. Father, throughout the history, blood has been the ultimate atoning sacrifice for sin. In the past, it only carried sins forward until the ultimate sacrifice that was made by your son. We remember that now, and we remember the blood that cleanses us so that we can stand in your presence. Pray that you'll bless this cup now as we take it. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. This is the time of the service where we share family news, um, similar to last week. I don't have any specific family news that's been handed to me outside of what is in the bulletin or what has already been mentioned um, in some other ways related to prayers for uh, specific families and people. Uh, we know that um, there's a lot of folks that are uh, dealing with uh, illness and sickness, um, either in the immediate family or themselves or with extended family around. Um, and also, we know that uh, some of our members or uh, winter members um, have lost loved ones recently, and so we, we um, ask that you would keep all of them in your prayers this week, uh, some of which are mentioned in the bulletin. And also continue to uh, be prayerful uh, and mindful of just uh, all the things that our society is dealing with now, uh, even worldwide, uh, with the coronavirus um, that... Uh, 
and please keep that in your prayers as well, uh, that that uh, will uh, soon uh, begin to relinquish its hold on our society. We'll uh, sing together uh, this closing song, uh, Sing to Me of Heaven, uh, and then Dave Miller has our closing prayer. Let's all stand together. Sing to me of heaven, sing that song of peace. On the toils that bind me, it will bring release. Burdens will be lifted that are pressing so. Showers of great blessing o'er my heart will flow. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Sing to me of heaven tenderly and low till the shadow <coughs> swiftly go. When my heart is weary, when the day is long, sing to me of heaven, sing that old sweet song. Sing to me of heaven, let me fondly dream of its golden glory, of its pearly gleam. Sing to me when shadows of the evening fall. Sing to me of heaven's sweetest song of all. Hello, church. Good morning. You know, one of the most outstanding miracles that Jesus performed while he was here on earth was the calming of the sea. And one of the men said to him at that time, Teacher, do you not care that we are perishing? And being aroused, Jesus rebuked the wind and said to the sea, Hush! be still and the wind died down and it became a perfectly calm sea picture that y'all if you will that is one of the most outstanding miracles Could, what would happen to you if you were there and you saw that be calm still uh, sea stop wind oh it just overwhelms me to think of this. Jesus can do anything. It was an amazing miracle. He also, he died for you. Another thing that he did. So let's remember him at this time and in a prayer as we take, uh, as we yawn. Take, did you help me, help me. I'm praying for the fruit of the vine. <laughs> Bread. I'm thinking that. I'm sorry. I was, uh, let's, let's do our closing prayer at this time then. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you so very much. You've done so much for us. Every blessing of the day. When we wake up each morning and look out and see the beautiful earth that's out there, that's a blessing. Thank you for the health that we have. We know there's so many of us that uh, are, are sick and are hurting and, uh, and many have died because of this virus and all. We pray, Heavenly Father, that you'll watch over us, each one of us, and keep us safe and help us to do what you know, we're supposed to do and not be foolish in our, in our everyday efforts. This morning we, took a, we will take up a collection at the end as we go out we pray that you will uh, bless each one of us as we do this. Open our hearts, open our pocketbooks, help us to give back to you, Father, part of what you have given to us and allowed us to use. 
We love you so very much, for Heavenly Father, and we pray that you'll watch over us, care for us, take care of us, and help us to live in a manner that will be pleasing unto you. Father, this is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen.